not fooled by the fake. Now he gets around him, but see, he has to go too deep, a little bit late. Gives the defensive back a chance to make a recovery. But a ball he still should have had for a touchdown. Yeah, that was beautifully yeah. thrown. And now Randall's calling timeout on a second down. That's the first time I'd used by Philadelphia. Randall is throwing the ball so well. We talked at the start of this broadcast that he's not having to do everything by himself anymore, but he is playing with such confidence. Coming back from injuries two of the last three years. He thought he had six, but it wasn't there. We'll be back in a moment. With Kevin Kiley and Pat Hayden, I'm Gary Bender. Let's go down to Kevin on the sideline. Uh, Gary and Pat, Darrell Green, the great old pro from the Redskins at corner, revered Richie Pettibone. And one of the reasons he revered Richie Pettibone as a defensive coordinator and head coach is because Richie let him guard the best receiver of the opposite team all over the field. Tonight he would be on Calvin Williams. Ron Lynn has him on the right side on Fred Barnett. Appears they're going the other way away from him. Kevin, thank you. Stay uh, dry down there, will you? Second down and ten. Sending up a screen to Herschel Walker. And Walker finally dragged down. And I'll tell you, Ken Hart he had a load as he tackled him, and he got those shoulders turned up the field. Advances the ball to the 21-yard line. Well, you know, so far in this game, the, the, the Redskins, the one thing they've done is they've, they've stayed in the ball game. I mean, last week, by about this point, the game was virtually over for them with all the turnovers, but they didn't convert their opening uh, kickoff return into any points, and now Randall Cunningham on third and five. This is where Randall Cunningham can absolutely kill defense because he can beat you about three different ways. What an escape artist. Third down and six officially. Goes in motion. Randall being chased from behind by Leonard Marshall. He's going to take off to the 10. The 5 diving touchdown. <laughs> oh, he can kill you. He can kill you on third downs. You know, Gary, I count at least three ways Randall Cunningham can beat you on third downs. He can scramble as he did there. He can throw the ball with great accuracy as he did earlier in this drive. And then he's got really startling arm strength. I mean, I think he can fool defensive backs a lot on third down. Eddie Murray, who has just been outstanding doing all the place kicking for Philadelphia, comes on. Ten plays, 87 yards, 20-yard touchdown run as Murray makes it a 7 to nothing game. Well, we talked about how well this Eagles team is playing, maybe as well as anybody in the NFL, and one of the reasons is number 12, Randall Cunningham. Well, we've already said it a couple times tonight. When he moves to his right, he's a lot more dangerous when he's running to his left. Now, early in the game, he threw a perfect pass going to his left. This time, he gets another, he gets a kind of a nice little screen block by Barnett, and you've seen that a lot, Randall Cunningham. When he gets to about the two or three yard line, he starts soaring. You can see here, he flushes here. Barnett's going to pick up a little block here. Then he, all the way, he waves his guy off, and he knows he's going to bring this thing. First thing he sees is, hey, I've got the first down. It's third and six. Then as he gets inside the 10-yard line, he says, if I could just, just make it to the three, I can jump it in. Now, I've seen Randall Cunningham dive in from three yards out probably four or five times. Well, he's the all-time leading rusher among quarterbacks. And that's the reason, as you can see, what he has done thus far. And a lot of those have been airborne yards, yeah, as we no. just saw a moment ago. Remarkable, remarkable athlete. This Eagles team can keep this guy healthy. Yeah, well, this could be quite a football season. That's why you hate to see him run like that. But you know, and he he is running. Zeke Barkowski was saying a lot more aggressively this year than he did early last year. Yep, and his plays like that. The confidence is coming back, and you have to really understand what he's fought back from. A knee injury, first game of the season. Last year, went down with a broken leg in the fourth game. Eddie Murray kicking off. It's going to be Mitchell at a 69-yard return to start this game. Out to the 30, and fights his way to the 34. So now Washington reeling a little bit. They need to have some success. As Pat mentioned, the thing just fell apart last week in RFK Stadium. They were down 31 to nothing at half, and as... I thought Norv Turner put it, it really wasn't a real test for this guy because he Schuler couldn't do very yeah. much. They were really hamstrung. Well, Heath Schuler, Gary, is a work in progress. 
I mean, he, he's a guy that they're hoping is going to get better and better every week. And, you know, they, they kind of say, hey, you know, it took Troy Aikman in his rookie year. He was 0-11 as a starter. And they're hoping he's sure can really come on week by week by week. He's 1-5 of five for 20 yards. The blitz is coming. They pick it up. And a handoff to Irvins, and Ricky Irvins goes for nine yards. Well, they did a good job picking up the blitz that time. Eventually, Greg Jackson made the stop. That's what the Redskins have to do, Gary. They have to run the ball, they have to possess the ball, and they have to keep this game close. Again, a quarterback who's trying to find his way in the NFL and on this team. I mean, his teammates don't know enough about him yet either. Boy, he was really impressive, though, coming in last night, yeah. visiting with him from the Smoky Mountain area of North Carolina. Well, he's groceries. only 22. <laughs> Second down and a yard to go. And the first down run this time by the upback for his fullback, Cedric Smith. This guy's been cut twice this year by Washington, but they added him for his blocking ability. And as you can see here, he carried the ball effectively. First down to the 45. That's just it. The Redskins are having two players fill the fullback role. I mean, what North Turner wants is a guy that can catch and block. And in Brian Mitchell at fullback, he's got a good receiver. And in Cedric Smith, he's got a blocker. But they have to use two different guys to fill the role. Ricky Irvins. Irvins is able to fight his way to the 50, a pickup of five. Greg Townsend made the stop. You know, Ricky Irvins last year was kind of a forgotten man. He reported late. He had some contract squabbles with Washington. That followed his rookie year when he was an all-NFC rookie. He led all the rookies in rushing. And you can see those numbers in 91, 680 yards. But they've diminished. You know, he is a strong runner, real strong. Good receiver, kind of a cutback runner. I mean, he, he can find a, a way here because the, the Redskins are looking for a tough inside runner. What they need are three, four, five-yard runs. They're not looking for 30-yard runs. Second down and five, handoff again. This time he fell it backwards. He tried to go over the top, and Greg Townsend, the savvy player who played so many years for the Los Angeles Raiders, is there. There's Townsend. He is fifth all-time in sacks coming into this ball game tonight with 108 and a half. They move him inside when they get into their nickel pass rush and then put Burt Grossman outside. You know, we talk about the lead blocker of the of the Washington Redskins. Number 37, Cedric Smith, comes into the hole. He doesn't really get anybody. There's nowhere, nobody for him to pick up, or he should have picked up two guys to give Ricky Irvin's a shot. On a third and four, Schuler, and the catch is not made. Yeah. It's Brian Mitchell, the intended receiver. That brings us to the end of this first quarter. He's Shuler now, one of six. Philadelphia with a seven to nothing lead. Well, the rain has diminished here. From time to time, it's picked up in intensity. Now has subsided somewhat as we start this second quarter play. Pat Hayden, Kevin Kiley, Gary Bender from the Vet Veteran Stadium where Philadelphia on a brilliant 20-yard scramble for a touchdown by Randall Cunningham has a 7-0 lead. It'll be a replay you're going to see a lot this week. Yeah. On all the highlights and all the shows. Reggie Roby now punting for the third time tonight. This one very high. Seidner at the 10 yard line and makes a fair catch at the 12. You talk about hang time. He got that one up. That'll be a 37 yard punt by Roby. We're going to take a break. We'll step aside as we have a 7 0 lead in favor of the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles with a 7 0 lead. We said at the start of this broadcast how effective the Eagles have looked, and they're looking the same tonight. Yeah, you know, they, they do it with such confidence. And we talked about Randall Cunningham using a lot of people. He's using all those guys now, he's using wide receivers, he's using tight ends. Charlie Garner's run well for him. But the big scramble was a patented uh, Randall Cunningham play. Well, the NFC East has been very effective, and that brings us to our GMC leaderboard. We're going to document how effective they've been. The NFC East has produced six of the last eight Super Bowl champs, including the last four and the West are represented by the 49ers and the EFC well they've had a tough time 
there's the pitch to Garner, and Garner out across the 15 to the 16 yard line. You know, Garner is impressing me with how strongly he's running, Gary. You know, he's not a big guy, he's 5'9, 181 pounds, but I mean, he has broken some tackles here in this first half. So he's not a little necessarily just a small scat back type. He caught a ball uh, in the first quarter as well. So this guy, if he continues to develop, and these Eagles continue to play like they had, you know, they did last week and they're starting to play tonight. This is a team that can contend, I think, for the NFC East title. Philadelphia looking for their fourth win in a row. They'll play at Dallas next week, and that should shed some light on this division. On the second and five. Boy, what a first by Garner. He was flying and it was tripped up as he brings it out to the 22 by Tim Johnson. He just explodes off the mark. Yeah, you know, he's a, he's a great option runner. I mean, you're not exactly sure where he's going to end up. But he's also decisive. When he sees something, he seizes it, he takes it. I mean, Andre Collins just kind of overran the play, and he found that little crease and almost picked up the first down. Well, Garner played two years for the balls of Tennessee. Before that, he was at Scottsdale Community College in Arizona. In one game, Pat, he carried the ball 47 times for 430 yards. Everywhere he's been, he's been successful. And speaking of Mr. Garner, across the 30, he's got a first down, and the Redskins right now, they can't tackle him. That's a 12-yard pickup. 49ers couldn't tackle him either. I mean, it's kind of unusual to use a 181-pound back as a short yardage runner, but Charlie Garner, as we talked, is breaking some tackles. Good lead block by number 32, James Joseph, right there. Morrison kind of spins out of it, but was disoriented by the big hit by James Joseph. But that is a very good short yardage play and a run. Started by the block by James Joseph. First down now to the 33. Cunningham scrambling around and goes down. This time the Redskins put some heat on. First was Tony Woods, and then Sterling Palmer eventually got there. But they had three different directions of which they were coming, and they're going to lose yardage back to the 30-yard line. Going to bring up a second down now, and still 12 yards to go. They just kind of forced him left a little bit that time. You know, the Redskins have had some problems offensively, but their defense has not played that badly, Gary. I mean, they were put in some uncomfortable positions last week against Dallas because of turnovers, but the defense has been the stronger part of this team. and Garner in the backfield. Cunningham over the middle, and the completion is made. Bavaro, who dropped one earlier, didn't drop this one. That's a first-down catch, just short of the 45-yard line, a 15-yard grab by a guy who at one time, Dr. Sid, would never play again. He had to have a bone grab on his knees, but they say this is the best he's looked physically in a long time. Well, he may not be the best player, the player that he was a few years ago with the Giants, Gary, but he can still catch the ball. I mean, he still has a great pair of hands, catches the ball in traffic. That time it was open, just kind of stopped in a little soft spot. Rain picking up a little bit in intensity as we have a first down at the 45. Garner getting a block from Herschel Walker, but good penetration that time by Andre Collins. Collins, who's had 100-plus uh, year tackle-wise the last three seasons. Yeah, Not very you, big, but very active. You know, you know what you like about Andre Collins? You talk about all the tackles. I mean, he, this guy's not into self-promotion. You know, he, after he makes a tackle, he gets back in the huddle like, you know, I expected to make that tackle. You know, if you're one of 19 children, <laughs> and he is, he was a 12th, how could you self-promote no, yourself? No, that's, that's exactly right. But, they, you know, they use him a little bit like, you know, Junior Seau in San Diego. Plays that kind of uh, the weak side linebacker and just chases down runners. Second down and 11. Cunningham to Herschel Walker, and Walker will be tackled at the 50-yard line. One thing that uh, Rich Kotai told us about number 34 is that he is so unselfish. He's playing so many positions. He says, I just want to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, you're right. He may be the most unselfish star, if you will, that, that I've, I've known. And he plays on special teams. He's on the punt team. I mean, he'll play wide receiver for him. He'll be a, a lead blocker if you ask him to him. I mean, he hasn't been a dy necessarily dynamic runner for them, but he's, done a, a, he's been a very versatile player. Four or five on third down. You saw that graphic? Third down here and five. down, he makes a 
makes his first catch of the night and he got the first down. Now most receivers, the rule is you don't throw the ball on third down short of the markers, Gary, unless you have a guy like Fred Barnett, number 86, there in motion. You'll see where the first down marker is. He's not anywhere.